Among other things, the new Centennial Complex will house the Simulation Lab, where high-tech robots give students from all schools a little practice at medicine. At first glance, one might think these students are working on a dummy. But, in actuality, these high-tech simulators aren't dummies at all. Representing the latest trend in medical education, these robot patients are capable of simulating just about anything you can think of and can respond to any treatments they are given, both the good and the bad. Medical simulation is important because we believe in delivering quality patient care safely. And the mantra in medicine in the past has been that you, do, you see one first, uh, you do one, and then you teach one. So that would mean that a student would come in and would see somebody perform a, a procedure such as a central line. Uh, the next time around they would actually do it and be the primary person doing the procedure. And then immediately following that they're supposed to be teaching somebody further down the, the ladder to do that procedure itself. Uh, this is obviously not ideal for the patient, and so we provide the opportunity for uh, medical students, residents, nurses to come in here to learn about the procedure first and to do it multiple times in a safe setting where there's no danger of there being an adverse outcome for the patient. And then they can move into the clinical setting and actually perform a procedure that they've done up to a dozen times uh, on an actual patient. Uh, we are working with what we call a human patient simulator. It's sort of a very high-tech robot patient that can cry, can vomit, can complain of chest pain, can have difficulty breathing. And we will get a scenario. They will show us a little bit of a videotape, perhaps, of something that has occurred, sort of give us a little bit of a background. And then we will go and work with the human patient simulator as our patient, who will then respond to our care. We can control quite a bit. So, of course, we can control the basic, you know, um, respiratory, cardiac, pulse. Um, we can also, for the infant, we can control fontanelle, um, torso motion, and um, we also, you know, stomach distension and various other things too. We can also induce blood loss, vomiting, tearing. We have barcoded medications that are already pre-set up. Uh -huh. And as my little helper here has given to me, sort of like scanning your groceries in the uh, self-service. And now all of a sudden we're going to go ahead and go into a much faster heart rate. You can reach over and now touch his pulse and now he has got a racing pulse because we've just added epinephrine to him. With a simulator like this, again the sat is dropping, the patient is start, starting to stop breathe, he's starting to, his, um, a lot of his values are starting to go um, all over the place and it puts that medical student, EMT, what, in a position to have to act and act quickly. And that is something you cannot find in real world that you can keep doing in a simulator. We're not going to be able to get them back now, no. unless I give them fluid. The nice thing about the simulator is, first of all, you can back it up and show them what they did, um, where they may have been right or wrong. But the second nice piece is you can just reset them. And then they can try again. What does the skin look like? It could be refrigerated. Red. It could red. also just be refrigerated. Red. Red. That's, that's just from a condition. Basically, she's been declined. It could be refrigerated so. injury, too. Is she unresponsive? Is she unresponsive? Is she unresponsive now? Can Charlene. you talk? Charlene, can you talk? Yeah. No? no? Alright. Uh, you need to speak. There's no chest rise. Chest rise is very sluggish. She's horse. We're going to have more time. Look at the old tooth sack right now. What? what what is this telling you? So, you're displacing. Are you ready? Yeah, we're intubating. Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. I can't do anything. Don't talk to me. Okay, go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Can you check one placement? Then someone also take one sound? It feels pretty real. Feels very real. He breathes. He sounds like he's breathing. Um, there's talk feedback. Um, our actions actually make him change his responses to us. So it's very real. 
it's extremely helpful, especially having a simulation like um, Charlie here who helps us understand how things may progress for the patient and gives us um, real-time feedback to understand what the process is like. Simulation is already here as the new way of being able to teach. You're standing in a room that, that I think, like our program, is leading with simulation.